to uh, Ephesians chapter 6 as we look at verses 1 through 4 today. To obey is to honor, and to honor is to obey. Specifically, we're talking about uh, children and parents, and it just dawned on me. Boy, the junior church kids need to be in here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about... Uh, uh, first, I want to start out by saying how our parents took care of us. And we had two Sunday school classes to write a bunch of things about what they appreciate of their parents and uh, how their parents take care of them. So let me, let me read some of these, okay? Uh, they pay for us to go to dance classes. Well, that pretty much narrows that down. Who, did, who wrote that one? Uh, doing laundry, they're making meals for us, they do the dishes, they take us to church every Sunday, they, they buy us gifts, they take us on trips, um, they take us to eat, they buy clothes when we need clothes, they get us pets, uh, they work so we can go to college, they make sure we get an education, uh, they protect us, they, they, they keep us safe, they are raising us to be like Christ. They buy furniture when we need furniture. Uh, take us to school events. They uh, let friends come over to the house. Uh, now that was uh, K through 5. This one is from the teenage class. Um, they sacrifice their time uh, after school from doing their own thing uh, to take us uh, to activities after school. Uh, listen to this one. My parents... Tanner and Kerrigan took me into their home and gave me a chance. What a, a, a great uh, page, paper. Uh, they give uh, me a car to drive. Well, that might narrow it down who went, said that one. Uh, money, uh, my parents um, sacrificed their money and time every day to uh, help me, please me. Uh, time and money, sleep and food, and sleep and time. You know, when I think about our parents, and for us that are parents in the room, uh, still active with children at home, or you that raised your children, we know that our moms and dads sacrificed to provide for us. They gave us direction. And if we were very lucky and blessed, uh, they taught us common sense. You've met people that don't have common sense. And so it's important for parents to teach that as well. Uh, they take care of us when we are sick and, and give us an education and some for a Christian education. Uh, clothes, food, a roof over our head, school activities, some get a cell phone, uh, TV, game systems, and they get the, some kids get their own room. You know, if you were like me, I didn't get my own room until my older brother moved out and I was a senior in high school before I got my own room. But our parents also, if you were blessed, they disciplined you. And there's many types of discipline. There's all kinds of disciplines, but they, they took care of you. Uh, our parents always said, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. You remember that phrase? Well, I cracked up. Charlie Cook's mom said, no, this is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me. Yeah, that's, that's a good one, isn't it? Oh, my. It is absolutely necessary that our children honor that sacrifice by loving their parents. If you're not demanding respect and love from your children, that means the, the Proverbs and the Psalm scriptures are talking about your home. Your home is not providing the coherency that it needs because they disrespect you and it surfaces. They will shame you in public if they do not respect you. A little girl had misbehaved, and as punishment at supper time, mom and dad had set up a little table in the corner, and she had to sit at that little table by herself. And they really didn't pay a lot of attention to her until they heard her pray, I thank you, dear Lord, for preparing me a table in the midst of my enemies. <laughs> Today, we are dealing with several imperatives from the Word. From the Word. That slide cracks me up with the smiles. Which child is yours? <laughs> can, can you actually see the red one clear enough? <laughs> that child is not a happy camper. 
Okay, so let's go to the text and read it. Uh, we're in chapter 6 of Ephesians 1 through 4. Let's, let's read it now. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate or provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And so God speaks to our children in this text. Paul didn't say, parents, teach your children to obey. It said to the children uh, old enough to understand Scripture, you obey your parents. To obey is a Greek word that simply means to listen to. Listen to your parents. It's an action word, and uh, it takes conscience and uh, consciousness and deliberate listening. It's saying, pay attention to your parents. And you don't really want to pay attention to your parents when you're a kid sometimes. That your parents get in the way of what you want to do. But you are in training And uh, your parents do not want to raise a fool. Your parents do not want to raise a lazy child. And uh, parents want you to obey. Why? Because they've been there and done that. They know the trouble they got into when they did that. They want to spare you the hardship. They want to spare you the wrong direction. They want to spare you. You know, your parents, I know it's hard to believe, kids, but they know things you don't know. It's true. They've made mistakes, and they see that you're making the same mistakes, and they want to stop you from that pain. One day, a little girl was sitting and watching her mother do dishes, and the little girl noticed that her mom had some uh, white hairs, gray hairs uh, sticking out. And she said, why are some of your hairs turning gray? The mom should not have said it, but she did. She said, well, you're my child, and every time you do something wrong, you make me cry, you make me unhappy, and a, a hair turns white. <laughs> well, yeah, she shouldn't have said that. But the little girl said, well, how come grandma's hairs are all white? Matthew 21 and verses 28 through 32 is a parable of two children, two sons. And Jesus told a story of the father who had two sons, and he sent both to work in the vineyard. One son said, I will go, but he didn't go. The other son said, I will not go, but he repented later, and he turned, and he went, and he worked in the vineyard. And so what can we learn from this? The father learned which son could handle responsibility and which son could not. Now, I know there's other truths in there, and there's a reason why Jesus told that parable. But look at it this way. One son was righteous and one son was rebellious. But the rebellious son wanted to look righteous and said, I'll go. He had no intention of doing that. The other son really struggled with the situation, said, I'm not going to go, but thought about it, repented, and went and did the work. So the one who handles more responsibility gets more privileges. Kids need to realize that's what's going on in the home. When you're more responsible, you get more privileges because there is a trust issue between parent and children. And so if you want more privileges, be faithful in your responsibilities. Biblical obedience is listening to parents and doing what they say. Now, I want our teenagers and our younger children to realize you're in training for adulthood. Your parents probably never told you that, but that's what's going on, and it's not a big secret. They are training you up so you can be responsible adults in public. So if you are age 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, you may feel like life is dragging on. But it's not. It's actually flying by, and you are going to be out of the home before you know it. You're going to be out of the home, and you might be saying, Hooray, I get out of the home. But what your parents are doing is they're trying to raise you up and train you and discipline you so when you get out there, 
you can take care of yourself. So you don't have to come back home. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's a, every family's own decision whether that needs to happen or not. But the point is this, listen to your parents. We see two reasons why children are to obey. First, when you obey your parents, the text says you are obeying the Lord. You love the Lord? Absolutely. Then love your parents because it's commanded. You love your parents. In chapter 5 and verse 21, it says, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Be subject to one another. Now, he goes into chapter 5, he goes into husband and wife relationships. But you know that the children need to submit to their parents. And parents, in, in a way, and I'll talk, about, I'll talk about this later in the message, parents, in a way, submit to their children in that Parents have an obligation, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But secondly today, children obey your parents because it's the right thing to do, for this is right. It means it's proper. It's appropriate that you learn from your parents. And uh, this is right. It's so important because, listen, it doesn't matter if you're in the Orient. It doesn't matter if you're in uh, Africa. If you're in Europe, in South America, children are expected to obey their parents. Doesn't matter where you are, good old U.S. of A, you need to obey. This is proper. This is appropriate. This is right. 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 2, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be, lover, men will be lovers of themselves. They will be lovers of money, boasting, proud, blasphemers, and disobedient to parents unthankful. Obeying your parents is right because God said so. My second point today, though, is children are to honor their parents. Honor your father and your mother. Honor. In the Greek, it is to count as valuable. Are your parents valuable to you? Many different ways a parent can be valuable to you, and it's not just so you can get a car when you're at a certain age. It's that you value them. And so, never talk back disrespectfully to your mother. Always go to bat for your mom. Imagine this. Imagine a playground fight at school. I don't know why someone that don't even know your mother has to say something about your mother. But that boy is going to, he's going to jump on that boy that said that. Why? Why would you do that? Because you are saving the honor of your mother. Nobody talks about my mom. And, and so you're going to take care of business. Now, right or wrong, but that is valuing and honoring your mother. And so, um, in verses 2 and 3, uh, Paul actually combines two Old Testament texts there. One is Exodus 20 and verse 12. Exodus 20 and verse 12, you know that's the Ten Commandments. But 12 says, Honor your father and your mother, for your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. That is the first commandment with a promise. It's a promise. If you will honor your mother, then God's going to take care of you in this life. He's going to do something special for you because you obeyed the first commandment with a promise. And then the next text is Deuteronomy 5, verse 16. Again, it says, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you that your days may be prolonged. Isn't that interesting? And that it may go well with you. Isn't that interesting? on the land which the Lord your God gives you. And so to obey is a natural law, but to honor is a divine law. Obey your parents and honor them. When God introduced the Ten Commandments, this was the first uh, commandment in the Ten dealing with human relationships, how we deal with one another. And now, an interesting text is found in Exodus 21. Exodus 21 and verse 15 says, And he who strikes his father or mother shall be put to death. 
That's pretty serious. That's pretty serious. 21, verse 17, He who curses his father or mother shall be put to death. Leviticus 20, verse 9 adds, His blood shall be on his own hands for acting like that. And you say, how in the world is that going to happen? I think it happens by reflex. Let, let's look at it this way. You, you strike your mom, and the first thing that's going to happen is dad's coming out of his lazy boy recliner. And you might survive or you might not because that's his bride. You, just, you don't ever strike your mom or your dad, ever. Or rule number six on mom's rules is I brought you into this world. I can, I can take you out. And that's how you die. <laughs> okay, so you're going to pick yourself up out of the floor. You know, I, well, I don't care what kind of relationship mom and dad have at the house. I, I don't care. Dad's still going to come out of that lazy boy recliner, and you're going to regret that you ever did that. You may be packing a suitcase that night. You just may be packing up. But I'm nine years old. <laughs> okay, all right. So why was honoring and respecting parents so important to God? Because it's the bedrock of society. If, you, if your children cannot respect you, they will not respect their teacher at school. They will not respect their preacher at the church. They will not respect that police officer that says stop. They're not going to respect. It, it's like that. And it will even go further into that if they will mistreat animals, they will mistreat you one day. You pay attention. You pay attention to how children are being raised or not raised. A lot of people don't want to discipline anymore. They want their child to grow up as a weed. Well, guess what you got? You, you, thank you. You got a weed. And wonder why? Because you didn't weed out the garden and the weeds took over. And so, uh, what are some ways to honor your parents? Um, you got some on the screen there. When you come to mom and dad with a question, you know, your little children come up, and they see that mom and dad are talking to someone, and mom or dad might just take their hand and do like that. That child is to what? Wait. You had it. It's exactly right. Uh, if your child doesn't wait, your child has not been taught to wait. And you need to... Do. Now, they also need to understand that if it's a true emergency, not that they're going to go home and spend the night with somebody. That's not an emergency. But if, but if a child is falling down and they broke their arm and they're bleeding and crying outside, that can, you can interrupt a parent's conversation for that. They need to understand uh, that kind of thing. But, but uh, treat your parents with honor. A way to honor is to tell them often that you love them and then show them that you love them. Honor them by remembering to give them a card on the birthday. If you cannot afford a card, you can write a letter. You can draw a picture if you're really young. But you make sure mom and dad get something from you. And by the way, when the children are real little and they can't buy something, dads, it's your responsibility to make sure those kids have a Mother's Day gift to give that mom. Well, she's not my mother. You're raising your children up to be these kind of people. And so you're taking the kids down to wherever you get your cards and a little gift for them so those kids can be raised up, respecting and honoring mom. It's the way it has to be. Uh, do one of, if you're a child living at home, do one of your chores. Do something that you know that your mom and dad do and lighten their load. Be respectful. Be thoughtful. Uh, give your parents uh, a, a sincere compliment. Yeah, a sincere compliment. Let them know that you love them. And then here my last one is, the last one on the board is four. Do not shame your family name. You have disrespected your mom and dad to the nth degree when you shame the family name. Don't do that. At least 8 million serious assaults are made each year by their children on parents. 8 million. A child who does not learn to respect his parent will not respect himself and he will not respect others. And if your child does not respect you, then ultimately uh, they're going to be 
taught to disrespect other authorities as well. We place our hand over our heart when the national anthem is played. And when we do that, we say that we respect the men and the women who served in the armed service. We love America. We respect those who went and died on battlefields for our country. Respect runs deep in the home. It runs deep uh, in the country. It runs deep in the church. Respect. If you're not teaching your children, I have witnessed a four-year-old spit in his dad's face and the dad didn't do anything. That's not respect. Proverbs 23, 13 and 14. Do not fail to correct your children. They won't die if you spank them. Physical discipline may well save his soul from death. Verse 3, back to our text again in chapter 6 of Ephesians. Verse 3, so that it will be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And so this promise in the text has two parts. It will go well with you and that you'll live long on the earth. When your parent asks you to empty the trash, they should not have to tell you twice. But, okay, you're forgetful. <laughs> uh, they, they should not have to beg you to empty the trash. They should not have to... You know, the thing is, when a kid gets a certain age, they get a little smart aleck and know better than mom and dad. And so they're tired of mom and dad's regimentation. They like all the things that the parents are doing to take care of them, but they don't want to pull their weight in the home. And so they're going to get mad, and they're going to go to a friend's house to live. Think about that. What parent wants you to go live in their home when you couldn't obey your parent at your house? They don't want you there. Well, yeah, you come on here and we're the heroes. Yeah, well, go ahead and make my house look like a tornado. Yeah, you done destroyed your home. Come on in and destroy mine too. Number three, further instructions for parents are found in verse four. Verse four. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord to build respect, security, character, wisdom, a love for spiritual things, common sense. And uh, this comes... Are you, are you still with me? This comes by time you spend with them. They're not going to know these things... Your children need to see how you act and react when life happens to you. What do they see at home? They're watching how you handle life. And parents are not to provoke, exasperate, frustrate uh, their children to the point of wrath, anger, and resentment. Now listen, that, that doesn't mean that you can't get them to clean up their room. That doesn't mean that you can't get them to take out the trash or wash the car for you or, or any of these things. That, they, that might make them uh, mad that they have to do those things, but that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about when you are unreasonable and unfair, when you are parenting poorly. That can exasperate. Colossians 3.21, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. And we have a right and we have a responsibility to discipline our children. As said before, there are many types of disciplines and spanking does not have to be nor need to be number one. There's other disciplines. But spanking should be considered why and when. When they are defiant when they are in your face about to spit on you, something better be done. Something better be done. Defiant means they challenge you, they resist you, they fight you. There's a difference. Other disciplines, restriction, and withholding things from them to teach a lesson, but there comes a time when you need to chasten. Listen, Proverbs 19, 18. Chasten your son while there is hope and do not set your heart on his destruction. You guys remember Mark Lowry, the Christian comedian? Well, he was at Olivet University for Grandparents Day last year. And he talked about, he admitted that, that he is a hyperactive kid 
as a child and that his parents spanked him a lot. And in fact, he said my, my parents' favorite verse was Proverbs 22, 15. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child and the rod of correction will drive it far from him. And he loves quoting that verse in his comedian act. Proverbs 29, 17, correct your son and he will give you uh, rest. Yes, he will give you delight to your soul. Now, have you ever wondered why these verses always say the son, the son, the son? I'm telling you, you the guy who got girls, you got it made. You got it made. Yeah. There was a lady at one church where I served. She was just almost to the point of tears. And at my boys, something has got to be wrong with them. They just fight all the time. I said, they're boys. That's what boys do. They fight all the time. Now, of course, there's got to be restrictions in that. But boys fight all the time. You don't hear that out of families with all the girls. They're just little saints. Well, no, they're not. No, they're not. But the Bible says, the son, the son, the son. I go, why pick on us? All right, so getting ready to wind down here, there are seven ways that we can frustrate our children. One is unreasonableness. You're just being unreasonable as a parent. Maybe you had a bad day at work and you're coming home and... You know, the boss kicked you, you come home and, and, and kick the spouse, and the spouse kicks the kids, and the kids kick the dog. And uh, no, there's no reason for that pattern to develop. Unreasonableness is unreasonable. There's fault finding. Martin Luther said in the 1500s, way back, he said, spare the rod and spoil the, tri the child is true, but beside the rod, keep a gift. Martin Luther said that in the 1500s. Keep a gift and give to him when he's done well. Yeah, amazing. Frustrate uh, by inconsistency. It's unfair to always change the rules to fit the parent and the kid can't keep up with uh, psycho mom or dad because it's whatever mood they're in is the rule, how they're going to change it and adapt it to their situation, and the kids are frustrated. And then there's non-discipline. Uh, when we let them win, uh, we think that they're going to be happy. They're not going to be happy. They need to see that mom and dad loves them. They need to see that mom and dad loves each other. They need to be disciplined. Overprotection. As a child gets older, they must be trusted. They must be given responsibility. They must be allowed to stretch their wings. You've got you to gotta let them go. You know, it's, it's a shame that the world that we live in has come to this, but I remember when we were kids 50-plus years ago, man, we could get on a bicycle and ride to the next town, and who cared? Who cared? As long as you were home, when? <laughs> when the street lights come on, it's supper time, you better get yourself home. But you've been out all day. We, we went nine, ten miles to swimming, swimming holes. And, and, and nobody knew where we were. It was a different world. As a kid, we did that. Rode mini bikes on the, the railroad tracks had been taken up, and it's a railroad bed, and just ride to the next who knows where. Kids can't do that today. But you need to find, as parents, you need to find a way to allow these kids to grow up and find some independence and enjoy something on their own. I was taking trips to Florida as a 13-year-old as a scuba diving. 15-year-olds going on a bus to Florida to scuba dive. You, got, I, I, you can't do that anymore, but you can scuba dive. You probably shouldn't let your 13-year-old go to Florida on a bus. It's a different world we live in, but you've got to find a way to let your kid, your child grow up. You're going to have to cut that apron string or loosen it and let your child grow up. And they grow up by getting out on their own and doing things once in a while. If they fail, that's a good thing. I'd rather them fail a lot as a teenager and learn from their failure than to get into the adult world where mom, mama can't protect them anymore and they get out and fail in the job, and they quit. 
and then they're back at your house. Let them grow up. Let them go and do things. A lack of trust breeds resentment. And you've got to trust your child to get out and do some things. And if they, they fail, then let's correct it and move on. Frustrate our children by favoritism. Your child must never know. You, first of all, you shouldn't have a favorite child. But, it, but if you do, no one's ever going to know it. You'll never share that. Seven, and last, we frustrate our children by our selfishness. Listen. You got married, you chose to have a child, now you be the dad, and you be the mom that you're supposed to be, and quit whining and singing the blues. You take care of your youngins. You take care of them. Don't always be passing them off on somebody else to take care of them. You had them, you take care of them. And uh, if you back out of being the parent you're supposed to be, you're gonna create damage damage and if they won't obey you one day your child will choose to not obey God because if you didn't train them to obey you you're not training them to obey God they'll always struggle with that parents we are to nourish our children Hebrews 12 11 now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present but painful nevertheless afterward it yields a, peace, a peaceable fruit of righteousness. This is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Because I want my child to know righteousness. I want my child to act respectful when they go on a missions trip. I want my child to act respectful when they go and do a, a job for a neighbor that they do it thoroughly and they do it with a smile and not griping and complaining and taking all day to do a two-hour job. You raise them up the way you want them. In conclusion, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, you as a parent may have felt, what happened? I did my best to raise my child in the Lord, and, and they left the church. What happened? Well, you need to first of all realize that Proverbs 22.6 is instruction. It's not a promise. And we've taken it as a promise and thought, what, what's, what, what's wrong with me as a parent? What did I do wrong? I thought I raised him in the Lord. It's instruction that we need to raise our children in the Lord. And so, whew, I wish the whole auditorium was full of kids. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise you. I thank you, dear God, for we that had parents that uh, at wit's end, hair turning gray, or being pulled out, they did not give up on making sure their children had common sense and respectability and love. I pray, dear God, for parents right now that have small children. They'll change things at home that mom and dad will work together and, and come to an agreement on how they can love and raise their children that other people will want to be around their kids. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.